So these are what I'll be working with on today's DIY craft. I just can't pass up when I see tins like these milk tins, these unique pitchers. Look at those unique handles. I've never seen such a thing. A rusty crusty old pitcher and they don't even have to be open. Sometimes they have lids that I can just envision making over and they don't have to be tin. Sometimes you just can see giving these new life. And to pair well with those secondhand finds, secondhand florals. You got to love when you find these out thrifting at a garage sale, anywhere you look at, oh my gosh, the beautiful sunflowers for the season. And to finish all those off, I did have to order some other greeneries. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to shop. I love to shop secondhand. And so in today's video, I am bringing you some tins. I love tins. I love the age of tins. I can always see how to repurpose tins. So in today's video, I'm sharing that process with you all using some decoupage paper, adding some florals in at the end and just making beautiful home decor that will last for years to come. So I shared with you the tins and the florals, but now I need to find some decoupage. Now I love Recycles decoupage, but sometimes it's just a little too big for what I'm using these for. So my go-to is to go to Etsy and see what I can find. And I like that primitive vibe. So I just happened on this shop that I've used a couple of her images before. And I'm like, okay, let's see what she has for the fall season or any type of animal. The nice thing about purchase on Etsy is it's an instant download. So you purchase it, it go, you download it, it's right on your computer. Then when I click on it in my files, it opens up onto my pages and then I can just copy it. And then I go into my Excel program and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it in this cell program. And that way I can size it to each individual item I'm working on. And it's a one-time purchase. Once you have it downloaded, it's yours, you're free to use. You just can't resell the image, but you can resell the item that you put the image on. So I do a lot of print preview, trying to have my estimated sizes of what I think I can print something out. That was my cat Peach's tail. And I, I just want to make sure that before I print it and I'm not wasting. Now I only want that one image of the cow so I can go in and just separate it that I don't want it to print out all four pages. I just want it to print out that one. And these were my guesstimates on my sizes so I could print out 11 different images. And I might have to tweak them here and there once I get them cut out and but for the general, I think I got the sizing that I wanted. You can sometimes when you elongate them or you size them differently, it stretches the image a little too wonky. I do think that this one might be a little small, but like I said, I, I can go ahead and, and then again, sometimes I change my mind. Though I have them printed out, I can still change my mind. So now we need to get all these. They're kind of clean, but I still want to make sure that everything's clean before painting them and getting any of those darn tags removed. Now this tin just happens to have paper already wrapped around it. So you can soak it in hot water. You can work for days trying to get all that paper off, or you can do what I'm going to do and seal that paper in so it doesn't cause a problem. <laughs> and a couple coats of shellac will do this. I've in the past removed paper, not so much fun at all kind of takes away from the fun of crafting so i've learned that if i do a couple coats of shellac it seals in and evens out that porosity and it's like having a shiny surface to work on so we're going to go ahead and get this painted up and i'm just going to paint where the paper was i like that patina it's not an old patina it's not an old can and this was sent to me by a viewer and so she sent it to me because she wanted me to make it over. She knew that I could make it over um, to a, hopefully the best of its ability. But I'm going to leave that top and we're going to be using the Fusion's Carriage House. Don't you just love that green color? It's one of my go-to colors, y'all. So if you've not used Fusion Paint, Fusion Paint is a primer paint and a top coat all in one. 
and it goes on like melted butter. It is such a smooth product to work with. And I always list Vonda Store, the painted heirloom, down in my description if you want to give it a try. If there's a 10% first time buyer code, Ginger Chick 10, in the description box. And then this tin painted up so nice, one coat was all that it needs. Sometimes maybe the shellac, sometimes that's all it needs. It is just beautiful. So I'm just taking some steel wool and making sure that it is nice and smooth. I want to just kind of open that paint up a little bit because I want to decoupage on top of it. I want that glue to have something to grab onto, not just a shiny top coat surface. Now I let my paper dry and I'm going to do a little bit aging. I'm going for antiquing wax only because it's a little bit darker than the antiquing glaze by Fusion to match up to the top of this. So I'm just using a brush and then I'm going to go gingerly just ever so slightly around the edge. I'm going to end up antiquing the whole container itself but I just want to give a little bit of age to that paper. And when that paper is dry, that paper is really going to soak it in. So going in gingerly and then working towards the center is your safer bet. And now that I have the antiquing glaze on, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the very thin clear wax, starting off in the middle of the paper where I didn't want that dark wax to go. And I know it always looks like it's going to darken that up, but it's just because it's wet. And then I'll take that clear wax wax off some of that antiquing wax and it just leaves a beautiful antiqued finish. Oh, I just absolutely love how this turned out. The labeling, it got that nice pop of green and now we're going to try to match up some of the greenery that I have in. And I like that greenery. It's, it might be a little bit dark, but it's a little bit short. And I know it is what it is. But I do have this, I think is a type of eucalyptus. And I think, oh, look at how that matches perfectly. It may not have any florals in it, but that greenery will just make that labeling of the cow pop even more. And I like to get the most out of my stem. So what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting it all off the stem trying to keep with the wire part that way I can really make my can look nice and full by separating it all. Now that I have it separated I it's still a little short <laughs> this is a tall can so I'm going to use some of my contractors paper I guess you can use like a brown paper bag and just fill in some of that void in the bottom. I want to use fluorofoam but I don't want to use that much fluorofoam. The fluorofoam really does help from your greenery shifting around. Now I don't hot glue it in. I find that that, you know, if somebody wants to change their florals out, it's kind of a pain sometimes. So anyway, I just put my floral foam in there as tight as I possibly can get it. And I just buy it from the Dollar Tree store. So now I can go ahead and start adding it in. I'm looking for my taller pieces first to put into the center. Before I get too far, I'm going to go ahead and add some of this grassy down in the bottom just to cover up that floral foam. Just enough. Then I'll just keep adding it in until I feel like I've covered it up. And then I'll work in, in the rest of this greenery. See how cutting that stem up? I think I had two stems and it's really just going to make this nice and full by cutting them apart. So now we're going to work on this smaller milk can and it's just that new age galvanized. I'm going to get this all nice and cleaned up, prepped. Prep is part of a big part of painting an object. You want to get anything that will prevent your paint from sticking off. Even though you're going to sand it or distress it, you still want to get that paint off. And of course, any tags, any, especially ones where it says, hey, I shopped secondhand. 
Okay, I could not help myself but use Carriage House yet again. I had already kind of picked out each one of the decoupage papers that I wanted to put on this, the little, you know, images. So this color went perfectly with that. I don't know, you know what happens when you all find a favorite color? You kind of try to find reasons to use it. And I thought about not painting the top of this one, but I really didn't think that galvanized did much for that green paint. So we'll just go ahead and cover that up too. Now this one did take two coats. As we go on to the others that I'm doing today, I'll share, share with you. I actually, after I get it all done painted, I take a mister bottle and the mister bottle, just slightly that moistness will take the brush strokes out of these tins. Um, so if it looks a little speckled, that is because of misting it. And even though I'm using a steel wool, I'm pressing kind of hard because I want it to get down to that regular metal. Now, if you used like even a 220 would leave scratch marks, but using a fine grit, a double four, the double zero, the four zeros, steel wool seems to give it that just that nice touch of aging to it without scratching it. We'll see those little checks around the outer of this lamb family just had that hue of green that just matched perfectly. So I'm just mod podging them on. I'm just going, making sure that I get all the way out to the edges, just a nice, even kind of thin coat. You don't need a lot to stick, a, stick it by any means. Now for this one to antique it and give that paper a little bit of age, there's so many different techniques. Like you can rip it, you can burn the edges, you can paint, you can do what I'm doing in kind of blending wax in on that outer edge just to give it that nice age. But for this one, I'm using Jolie's black wax, just a, li just a little bit, and it's really going to give that aging effect. So I'm trying not to hit the image too awful much, but it's okay if you do because you want it to look like it's been touched and aged. I'm not making it distressed where I am doing the paper wore off. I'm just trying to give some age to that paper. And yep, we're going to go on the black wax on this entire tin. Now that we have that all on, we're going to take some of that natural. We're going to start it with the paper first and then go in and get, it's a wax on, wax off kind of concept. So we're gonna be adding some more florals so I don't waste my floral foam. I'm gonna go ahead and stick some more of that contactor's paper in the bottom of it to fill that void. Now for this one, I'm going to use some of the baby's breath from Hobby Lobby. I just think that this color goes with the lambs perfectly. So same thing, I'm going to cut it down so I can get the most use out of my stem. For this one, I'm going to switch over to this crinkled paper. And man, do I wish I could share a link with you all. Both of those bags were thrifted. And I know once I run out of them, I'm going to be sad and wondering how do I get more myself. Let's move on to this basket. So it really isn't raised, but just in case it is, I'm going to go ahead and sand it off just to, you know, sometimes they look and they don't feel like they're raised, but just a precaution. And then we'll just get it washed off. But for my next one, I thought I'd share my next favorite green color that I've been using, which is Sweet Pickens in the Basil color and you can mix up little batches you don't have to mix up you know for like a whole furniture piece so it's just equal parts whatever you're using to measure with and then I go 
probably I say equal parts but I do a little bit more water I I find that it spreads a little bit easier for me but you still do need to do the two minutes of stir time sit it off to the side let it thicken and it's funny when you're stirring it you will really start to see the air bubbles form oh I just I just really love using <laughs> milk paint it's so much fun so and I can't say you know milk paint is unpredictable you never know if it's going to crackle it's not going to crackle you know y'all it's it's just the fun of the unexpected now this little bucket has been repaired by somebody and the glue job is okay um i'm not going to try to fix it i like the imperfections of it all it's just a resin little bucket by fixing it up and repainting it we're going to be giving it a whole new life and now that my basket is dry, the resin didn't take as long to dry. This one a little bit longer because it is more of like a cardboard wood, like a pulp. We're going to call it a pulp. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead with that same basil cutter on this one. And I know at first you're like, oh, you can still see the flowers. You should have primed over it. Y'all, don't worry. Don't worry. We will get it. But on this one, I want to do the inside also. This is uh, another hand-painted job. But I want to go ahead and cover all that light white color up. And after the first coat is dry, I can go back in with that second coat. And look how that second coat just grabs onto that first coat and covers that floral up. So you're not going to get the same type of coverage with a milk paint. If you're looking for that coverage, you want to use the fusions. I like the imperfections, the perfectly imperfect of the milk paint. As you see, it's not one solid color. You see dark spots, you see light spots. It's just how it's supposed to have that old time chippy look. So I did some 220 over it just to get some of the airs distressed. And now to make sure that my paint is nice and smooth, I'm going back to that fine grit steel wool. Now for this one, I fell in love with this sweet little pig. It was on that four pack with the cow. And I know it's too big. So I'll just cut it down to the size that I need. So I'm sure there's there's probably a few wondering like okay so you're using black wax but you're also using the antiquing the brown wax it just depends on what color you want to bring out in your image and on this pig that's not I mean it's black you can envision that it's black and white spots but it's not really black it's more of a brown so that is what I envisioned for it you cannot go wrong if I added black it would just turn in into a different hue and really take your focus somewhere else it's it you can't go wrong y'all and by the end of the video I end up mixing the two waxes together anyway because I was using the same brush it all gives you that nice finished look it seals that paper in it gives a little bit added bonus to the paint job it's just the fun of DIYing, just flip-flopping, trying new things, or there's nothing with wrong with the same old, same old. So now this greenery I got from Factory Direct Crafts. I love it because I love it that it has that brown stem. And then I love that the tips are of the greenery have that brown hue to it. So perfect for us going into fall, but also perfect for year round. So after removing the tags, I'm just going to fill it in. Same thing, I cut it off these stems also. That way I can get the fullness going on there put some of that grass down to hide the floor foam. I left the handle up because I think it's a wonderful detail and just had fun putting the greenery in until I felt as if it was nice and full. Now don't forget though, when you're doing greenery, you want your back of your item to be just as full as the front of your item because you never know where somebody may sit it. So 
So my resin little bucket did take two coats. Resin, it's basically just sitting on it. You're just kind of waiting for it to cure to bond. I didn't want complete coverage. I like that little wood was going to show through. But I did not feel that I need to paint the bottom or the need to paint the inside. Just the outer, as long as you keep your steady hand and you clean off your bottoms, that's all you need to do. And as I said earlier, you don't know. Will it crack? Will it not crack? It just, these just weren't items to, on today's video that were going to do any chippage. Maybe a little cracking here and there, but as I added the heat gun to see if I got any of that yummy crackle or crazing going on. But I, I really, I really did not. But it did help the paint dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and go in and start distressing this. Now, I wanted some of the metal to show and I want some of that wood to show. Now this is the same day painting. So as soon as it was dry with the heat gun, I started distressing it. So not really a lot of time to cure bond the paint onto it. And as I'm sanding it, you can see like bigger chunks coming off. And you could have gone, oh no, oh no, I ruined it. I need to paint over it. Or just roll with it and let it be what it's going to be. So if one item's a little bit more distressed than the other, does it really matter? I don't think so. And I changed my mind. I stole somebody else's <laughs> image. <laughs> I thought I was going to put this on something else. But then after I got this distressed and with it having that middle part in there I wanted something a little bit taller so I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up and put this one on this bucket and I'm just gonna try to get it as flat as possible I'm not going to crease it into that part I think that would make it even more obvious I'm just gonna put the label right over it So I picked up these little floral picks. They're not the long stems. They're picks from Hobby Lobby. I think they're like a hydrangea. Don't I, I'm not a flower expert. I just pick out things because I think it's pretty. But I love, you know, I'm a muted kind of tone person. And I just love, even though it's muted, look at that pop. It's just gorgeous. So those are in those sale aisles that never seem to be on a sale at Hobby Lobby. But they were pretty. So I know you're so used to me making things on the channel, <laughs> Rust and Krusty, and here I am covering over Rust and Krusty while well, this is manufactured Rust and Krusty. <laughs> so, and I love Fusion's cast iron. So we're going to go ahead and get this painted up. comes to a picture it's so hard to decide where do you put your image and for me I mean you would think you'd put it right in the front of the picture like underneath the spout but if you're going to put flowers and decor in it it's nice to be able to see that handle also so whether you put it on the right side or the left side it doesn't really matter it's just fun to give people different options and I always put them on the same side and yeah, I want to see the spout, the image, and the handle all at the same time. And I think antiquing wax is a beautiful accent to this paper. It'll just give it a little something different to blend in with what florals I'm going to be putting in here. So that's something you also have to take in consideration too. If you know 
that you're going to put florals in at the time, what would look better with the florals? Ooh, well, hello there. I love these thrifted flowers. I love that color. I only wish that there was one more. There was only four. So this is where kind of working, cutting those stems down, filling in the bare space of this item of the picture really will come into play. Because if you just flopped them in like this, there doesn't look like there is enough. But we are going to make these four work. So I'm going to go back in and tweak the stems. I want them to be pushed down as far as they can go. So the floral foam is really going to help with that. But see, there's too much dead space. I'm going to go back in with my wire nips. A good pair of wire nips is nice to have on hand. And I'm just going to keep tweaking them until, see, where it's a little bit closer to that lip. So just a little, just a little bit. You don't want to get it, like, so short that it gets sunken in. You still want that bottom to hit that. So that's what's really keeping that straight up. Oh, isn't it amazing how those four filled that in? Now, you don't have to do this, but I just by chance have some, some extra leaves just hanging around. And I thought I would just add a little bit of something hanging out. Really, the four filled this up perfectly, just tweaking on those stems. But I just thought a little bit added would be nice. So next, I'm going to be using some more of the Sweet Pinkins in a Cherry Pie. It is just a nice, deep red, almost with that brown undertone. So I thought it would be perfect for this Rusty Krusty. And I'm not going to be adding any florals into this. I love that lid. This is something that I have had in my own decor. I tried to sell it, I don't know, numerous times in a retail booth that never sold. So it is time to give it a makeover to make it be wanted. I absolutely love it myself and I already am loving the red on there. And I know that this is an older piece and I really want to leave that top patina so we're just going to do this bottom section. And now we'll go in with that second coat. The first one coat is usually very seldom ever enough to cover. But the question is, if I take a heat gun to it, will I get any crackling, crazing, any chippiness? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> but like I said, it does help dry the paint. I believe I got this tin in a thrift haul <laughs> that was an extra, but I saved it. I cannot get that lid off. I just cannot. The, the more I work on it, the more, you know, I know there's like Vaseline and WD-40, but sometimes you can't always get that all washed off. And I knew that the black was beautiful, but the black wasn't showing off all that amazing detail on this can. So we're going to go in. I love that cherry pie with that black. It looked great with brown. It looks great with black. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start sanding. I've got 220 sandpaper, not just the steel wool this time, because I want to pop that detail. I don't care if like a metal silver shows. I just want that detail to pop out a lot more. It's just amazing. So I thought this image was perfect to go with the cherry pie, trying to keep that seam in the back so that this is the front, the black chickens on here. Oh, be still my heart. If your heart doesn't flutter a time or two while you're crafting, what the heck are you doing? This is just, you have to love this. You just have to be like, oh, look at how this is turning out. My vision is coming true. So I hope you're hanging in there because we are not over yet. Yes, you do. You see the color curry. Did you all see that hutch that I did, that small little hutch in this color? Oh, wow. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, my hands are messy, y'all. Um, Beautiful yellow mustardy color, curry color. And that cabinet, y'all, it sold right away. So I definitely know that this is a good color choice. So, yep mixing it all up that is the fun like you probably look at a pack of milk paint and you think oh i gotta do a furniture piece i gotta do a big furniture piece no you don't you can do small little pieces like these tins because with it being a powder you can just mix up just a little bit it is awesome This is what I'm talking about, the perfectly imperfect of milk paint. Why that crackled, crazed, I don't know. I have no idea. But I just love the imperfect of that it's not like, I don't know if it's the heat or the way I mixed it, but you can kind of see some different red tones in it. But I love it. Do you ever put something on and you're like, nope hate it hate it so we'll just fast forward to this part because i'm going to rethink the image that i put on this but we have these amazing florals that are going into it and i'm pretty sure i got these at hobby lobby i just loved that bright bright pop now the problem with these pictures is i picked them up because they were unique i love that side handle but how do I get my florals to kind of trend down on a angle? We'll see if I can make it work. And then the other thing with this stem is it's not strong wire. They are wired, but they're not like really stiff wire. So I really had to play with it, get the hot glue. So like sometimes, yeah, the grass wasn't working in there either because it was preventing because they were just bending. And sometimes when you put hot glue on the end and the hot glue is hot, it kind of melts into the floral foam. So that's what I'm going to end up having to do. So now I'm just, as you see, I like to cut them apart and then I'm going to make them different lengths to, so they look like they're trendling down. So see how go taller towards the top, 
start to cut them a little bit shorter as we go towards the handles and then I'll fill in the space from there. So I'm using two of these stems to fill in here and it has a lot of what I would consider like weedy stuff. So, and then I don't like that there's just sticks hanging out of, so I'm just gonna cut it down to the bud. So you just see that bud and I think that'll really group this all together. And I cut a lot of just the flowers off. I didn't want it to be so weedy looking. So I popped back on to Etsy. I found these images. I thought, okay, this, this is long enough, tall enough, wide enough. It'll fit that space so much better. Well, there's always got to be a problem child, right? I mean, I did, a, I'm doing 11 for you all today. So now I have this old paint can. I think I picked it up for 25 cents at an estate sale. And it's just, I don't know, those old paint cans can tell a story. Even the newer ones, if you wanted to clean them out, but I don't. So I'm going to be using that same curry color on this paint can. I think it goes well with this aged patina. So I know that I did not plan on the sampler on this to begin with, but the yellow just matched and I can envision the curry color on this and that paper just goes well. So I'm just going to leave an outer edge of the brown around it. I just, oh, I love it. So I really didn't feel like I had to do a lot of antiquing around the outer edge of this paper because it had the brown fit frame on it already. So we're just going to go ahead and just blend everything all together. That wax is going to seal in the paper. It's going to age the paper. It's going to age that yellow and the imperfections of the milk paint. It's really going to look like it's always been on there for a long time. Here's another one of those tins that, you know, I had the lid, it said tea on it, but yet again, it gets overlooked and nobody really buys them out of my retail booth. So I just, I can't see like just throw them away by any means. So, and I can only fit so much into my own decor. So I'm going to go ahead and get this painted up though. We're going to switch over to a brighter red. The paper I have for this, it, the chickens have a little bit brighter red on them. I could have swore when I was filming and making these all that I filmed when I was misting them on that second coat with a mister bottle just to help with the brush strokes, but I can't find any of it in my video. So just know that I did. I don't know if that helps you or not, but yes. So now we're just going to go back in and I want to distress this like the milk paint and the fusions definitely distress differently because the milk paint needs to be sealed in and it's really just kind of raw but when it comes to the fusion paint you can tell like hey i'm on here you put me on here and i don't want to come off this is the image that i said i'm like i don't even know how that turned out so small i must have missed 
red when I was sizing it, but oh, this is much more size appropriate to this can. You all made it to the last one. Yep, I have the last one. This is one of those off to the side kind of pictures. It must have like an old milk pouring, maybe. I don't I, They're both reproductions. They weren't old by any means. So cast iron it is. I'm just going to be doing most of the outer and the handle. Just trying to be careful not to get it on the bottom. This one kind of had a stopping point and when I went into the inside I'm like oh this is in its first time somebody's already colored it. Then you notice I switched over to the <laughs> I started off first with the steel wool but I'm like oh that's not going to distress anything at all. That that paint is good and on there so we're going to go back to that 220 because I'd like to age some of this. Now look at these second hand sunflowers, Shasta daisies, black eyed Susans. What, what do y'all think that they are? I don't care. They are just beautiful. <laughs> They're well made too. And I love the nice strong stem on them. the same concept here. I'm going to cut that stem so it is touching the bottom of whatever it can touch. I want that flower to lay over. I want no dead space to be seen. I'm going to trundle them down as much as I possibly can and fill in that space. So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? Yes, I I I can't pass up a tin. If it's priced just right, the next thing you know it's in my hand and I am purchasing it. And I had built quite a stash. So 11 in this video is quite a lot. But I can vision something for each and every one of them. Now those side picture ones kind of had me stumped because I wanted you to see I wanted you to see the beautiful handles and I wanted you to see the decoupage paper and yeah I'm sorry that I off film in my in my craft office my office I'm like I don't like this paper I'm tearing this paper off and it just it just didn't look right it just didn't film right at the end reveal that's just how sometimes it goes we all change our mind but heck one out of ten or one rethink out of 11 that's not bad at all so let me know if i have inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way yes it's as simple as down downloading off of etsy i link that down below and i know it's the printer and the paper and the ink 
but it's the ease of being able to do it all at home and sizing it to the project that you're working on. So thanks again for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you loved this kind of content, this is your jam about repurposing secondhand finds. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and all along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.